Hi friends, in this tutorial series we will be covering Spring 5 OAuth 2. Previous tutorials we covered the topics like what is OAuth 2 and also the Spring 5 OAuth technology stack. In this tutorial we will be looking at the authorization code grant type flow. So we will be looking at what is this authorization code grant type flow and in which scenarios it should be used. For this I will be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So go to web series. In web series, we will be looking at Spring Boot Security OAuth 2 complete tutorial series. So previously we have looked at what is OAuth 2 and also the Spring 5 OAuth 2 technology stack. The tutorial that we are going to look at today is understanding OAuth 2 authorization code grant type. In a previous tutorial, we had seen how OAuth it has evolved to authorize websites, apps like Yelp to access protected resources like our email contacts, name, basic info without the sharing of passwords. For this authorization code grant type is used by websites and mobile apps. In this tutorial, we will be looking at what is authorization code grant type, understand its working and also the associated terminology like scope profile, response code, access token. So we will be looking at what these are. In order to better understand the authorization code grant type flow, let us take an example. Suppose as a user, we want to sign up on stackoverflow.com. In order to complete the sign up process, the user will need to provide information like name, email id to stackoverflow.com. Now there are two ways to provide this information. Either the user he can himself uh, enter the details like what is his name uh, or his and also his email id or we already have this information with gmail and we can simply ask gmail to provide or share this information with stackoverflow.com. So here if you go to stackoverflow.com, here we have sign up. In sign up the user he will either need to enter the details like the name, email id and also the password for his account or he can click on the sign up with google and ask google to share the details like his email id and the name of the user with stack overflow so that uh, the user can get signed up on stackoverflow.com. This sharing of the user information by gmail with uh, stackoverflow.com it is done using authorization code grant type. So when making use of this grant type, the client that is the web and mobile app, they launch a browser to begin the flow. As we had seen in the first chapter of the series that when OAuth 2 did not exist, what users had to do was they had to share their credentials with third party websites like Stack Overflow so that they could access the information that they wanted. Now this is password anti-pattern and not a good way to share the data with third party websites. So here we authorize Stack Overflow to access the user information from Gmail using the authorization code grant. Let us have a look at the different actors involved in the authorization code grant. So first is the resource owner. Uh, in our case, the resource owner will be the person who wants to sign up for Stack Overflow. So he, he will be sharing his own personal details with Stack Overflow by using the Google sign up. Next is the client application. So the user he wants to sign up uh, for stackoverflow.com. So this will be our client application. Next is the authorization server. So when the user he wants to sign up for stackoverflow.com he will be making use of uh, use of the sign up with Google which will make a call to uh, the Google authorization server. So in our case the authorization server will be the Google authorization server and finally the resource server. So in our case the personal details of the user like uh, his uh, name email id that he wants to share with stackoverflow.com they are stored with gmail. So the resource server in our case will be gmail server. In case of the authorization code grant type, the client it should already be registered with the authorization server. So in our case stack overflow it should already be registered with the Google authorization server. On successful registration the Google authorization server it provides the client that is stack overflow with the client secret and the client id. So we use this client id and the client, uh, client secret during authorization code grant. As the name suggests the client secret it should never be shared and be kept secret. Let us now look at how OAuth 2 authorization code is used when a user he signs up for Stack Overflow using Gmail. So when we go to stackoverflow.com, the user he will click on sign up and now uh, when he will click on the sign up with Google, a call will be made to the Google authorization server. So when he clicks on this, a call has been made to the Google authorization server. Copy this URL here. So let us have a look at this call that is made to the Google authorization server. When the call is made to the Google authorization server, the parameters that are passed here are the client ID. Then here we have the scope, the redirect URI, the state parameter, the response type is equal to code 
and the flow name is equal to general worth flow. Let us have a look at what these parameters are that are used by Stack Overflow when making a call to the Google authorization server. So first we have the client ID. The client ID it is the public identifier for the application obtained when Stack Overflow it first registered itself with Google. So as we had previously seen that Stack Overflow it will need to register itself uh, with the Google authorization server and the Google authorization server on successful registration will provide Stack Overflow with the client ID and client secret. So here in the URL the first parameter that is passed to the Google authorization server is the client ID. So this is the client ID that uh, is associated with Stack Overflow. The next parameter is scope and its value is profile comma email so scope it has one or more space separated strings indicating which permissions the application is requesting the specific auth api that we are using will define the scopes that it supports so in our case uh, the scope that uh, the uh, stack overflow wants is profile comma email so if we go to this page given by google so here if the scope it is profile it means that the client application it wants to see the user's basic profile info if the scope it is email it means that the client application that is stack overflow it wants to see the email address so in our case stack overflow it wants the basic profile info and the email address of the user from gmail so here we have scope is profile and email the next parameter is the redirect uri so the redirect uri tells the authorization server where to send the user back after they approve the request so this is the page that we got when the user he clicked on the sign up with gmail button on the stack overflow sign up page the user will then need to enter the Gmail credentials here and once the Google authorization server it has validated these credentials it will ask for authorization to share the basic uh, profile info and the email address with stackoverflow.com so if the user he authorizes uh, this exchange or sharing of information then the Google authorization server it will redirect back to the redirect URI along with the authorization code so once the authorization is complete the Google authorization server it will call this redirect URI along with the authorization code we'll have more look at this redirect URI later on in the flow the next parameter is the state parameter so the state parameter it is a random string that is generated by the client application and it is included in the request the client application then checks if it is the same value that is returned after the user authorizes the app this uh, is used to pre prevent the csrf attacks so when sending the request to the google authorization server the stackoverflow.com it will be sending this uh, state parameter and once it receives the request back uh, on the redirect uri the stackoverflow.com it will check if uh, the state parameter is same so that it knows here that yes this request it has come from google authorization server only and not from any other application so this is used to prevent csrf attack the next parameter is the response underscore type and its value is code so this parameter it tells the authorization server that the application is initiating the authorization code flow now that we have gone through the request uh, sent by stackoverflow.com to google authorization server with these parameters let us have a look at uh, the further flow so once uh, the google authorization server it receives the request from stackoverflow.com it sends uh, or provides a user login page back to stack overflow so this is the uh, user login page uh, which is provided to the user so let us enter the credentials here So here Gmail it has shared my name and my other basic profile info and email address with stackoverflow.com so that I can create my account. When I entered the Gmail credentials and clicked on sign in some more request calls have been made between the Google authorization server and stackoverflow.com. So let us understand these steps. So these steps they happen behind the scenes and we do not see them. So let us understand them. So the Google authorization server it provides the user login page to the user. The user logs in with the Google credentials. After the Google authorization server it has authenticated the credentials provided by the user. It then redirects back to the redirect URI provided by Stack Overflow and also provides the authorization code. So here it had provided as this redirect URI in the request. So the Google authorization server it redirects back to this redirect URI and also uh, along with the request it provides the authorization code. On receiving this authorization code stackoverflow.com it again makes a post call to the authorization server with these parameters. So the first parameter is the grant type. So this value will be authorization underscore code. This tells the token endpoint that the application using authorization code grant type. The next parameter is the code. So this is the authorization code that is provided by the authorization server when it redirected back to the redirect URI. 
Next parameter is the redirect URI. So this is the same redirect URI that was used when requesting the code. The next parameters are the client ID and the client secret. So on registering the uh, Stack Overflow with a Google authorization server, we had received the client ID and client secret. So these are also passed in the request. The client secret ensures that the request to get the access token is made from the application that is Stack Overflow only and not from any other potential attacker that may have intercepted the authorization code. So Google authorization server knows that yes, this request or the access token, it is coming from the uh, from stackoverflow.com only. On receiving this request, Google authorization server, it provides the access token to Stack Overflow. Next, uh, using this uh, received access token, Stack Overflow, it makes a call to the resource server to get the authorized user information. The resource server will validate the access token that it has received from uh, Stack Overflow by making a call to the authorization server. On successful authorization, it will share the authorized user details with Stack Overflow. On receiving the user details, the user can then successfully sign up with Stack Overflow. So these are the steps that take place in the authorization code grant. Here below we have the diagrammatic representation of the steps that we have just followed for the authorization code grant type. The authorization code grant type flow is similar for other applications also. For example, here we have just seen for Stack Overflow. Suppose if we go to Quora.com and here we have to sign up using Google. Then again we get this Google page. On further inspecting this request, we'll see that the parameters they are quite similar to what we had seen previously for stackoverflow.com. So here we have the redirect URI. Similarly then, here we have the response type. Then we have scope. Also we'll be having the client ID. So if you'll see the parameters that are needed to be passed to the Google authorization server, they are quite similar to the ones that were used by stackoverflow.com. Hope you have understood this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be implementing the authorization code grant using Spring 5 and Keycloak server. Thank you.